pen. It's got a, it's got a red lining. You can see it in the long slit down the side. We've been talking about silk and wool blend for 20 minutes. Well, can I guess that you emailed me in the middle of the night for an emergency session due to garden variety issues? <laughs> I was down and I emailed you and I woke up and I feel better. I, I, I feel better. I had a thought. Mm -mm. I want to talk about the incident at work. It's okay, Barry. You're safe. I just want to bring the details back. We'll just talk about the details. A high school from Camden, New Jersey was on a field trip at your place of work and two young ladies came up to you and one took your hand and put it under her shirt on her breast and the second one did the same and then they just ran off laughing to their friends. You surmised that it might be on a dare. You said they were 17 or 18. You said it upset you for days. It was just a teenage prank. I, I get that now. And see, that's my mistake. I believe that I went over this incident with you too fast. Although you said you were fine, and the other identities I met with said it was fine, I believe that this brought up issues from when you were a child and abused. Sometimes another incident of abuse can cause suppressed personalities to take the light. Dennis, if this is you, I completely understand why you felt the need to take over and protect the others. <laughs> Doctor, not this again. The others told me that you and Patricia told the group about this beast. And I told them that these are just scary stories that Dennis and Patricia tell the others to scare them. How this beast can crawl on walls like the best rock climbers, using the slightest friction and imperfections to hold his body close to seemingly sheer surfaces. How his skin is thick and tough like the hide of a rhinoceros. Do you really believe the stories about the beast? If this is you, Dennis, I understand why Kevin needs you. You are strong and disciplined, you are precise, and you will not be taken advantage of. You can trust me. For example, I do have the ability to use Kevin's full name and bring him forward as he has in the past. But I wouldn't do that. I know that that would be chaos for all of you. Everyone would grab the light. I don't want to hurt any of you that way. You don't have to hide. I know you are someone who cares for Kevin. You are not evil to me. You were necessary. Dennis, is that you? They keep calling us the Horde. The others, you know. Miss Patricia and I, we are ridiculed. Now, we're not perfect, but we don't deserve to be ridiculed. We're all struggling. They have to admit that. I am pleased to meet you, Dennis. You too. I assume you don't know who emailed me for the emergency sessions. One of the others. Are you in charge? Yeah, we've taken charge. We're the only ones that can protect Kevin. We're all here to protect Kevin. He's very weak. He doesn't know how powerful we can be. Would you mind telling me when you first came into existence? 
and how you and Patricia, the other undesirable identity, became aligned. That's okay. Do you still have strong beliefs? That depends on what. This story of the beast. One thing, Dennis, that may comfort you, if you are confused, is that you've met the other altars. You're all in a room in chairs, right? Yeah. But you never met the beast, because he doesn't reside with the rest of you, because he resides in the train yard, as the story goes, because Kevin's dad left on a train. But the fact is, you and Patricia have never met the beast, have you? No. That's because he's not an altar. He's not the 24th identity. He's a fantasy.